Namaste. My name is Rui Zemo. I'm International Meditation Master. Today I want to speak about how to heal an overactive bladder and enlarged prostate. So the symptoms are nearly the same. And then we think, oh, we have uh, an uh, enlarged prostate, maybe you have an overactive bladder. And an overactive bladder has have also um, has also women, so I go through both of it. So 60% of males over 60 years and 90% of the males over 85 years have an enlarged prostate. And they get it mainly through a wrong diet. I show at the end. Then the, what are the symptoms of an overactive bladder and an enlarged prostate? May include dribbling at the end of urinating, inability, inability to urinate, incomplete emptying of your bladder, incontinence, needing to urinate two or more times per night, pain with urination or bloody urine, this may indicate infection, slowed or delayed start of the urinary um, stream, straining to urinate, strong and sudden urge to urinate, and weak urine uh, um, stream. This, for instance, this strong and sudden urge to urinate you find with so many women, <laughs> so they don't have an enlarged prostate, for instance. Less than half of all men with enlarged prostate have symptoms of this, of the disease. Less than half of all men with enlarged prostate have symptoms of the disease. <laughs> Things is over. So you can have one and, uh, other, and, and you don't need to have the symptoms. So all the terms, uh, symptoms are fear, stress related and an inability to let go. That makes 100% uh, um, <laughs> sense. No? This is the reason why half of all men with an enlarged prostate are not getting these symptoms. Then what will heal the enlarged prostate? Best supplements, food for healing, prevention of an enlarged prostate are pumpkin oil, saw, palmetto, and maca, enhance the sexuality. Take them two times daily in the morning and night with the food. I prefer to eat 30 grams of ground pumpkin seeds per day instead to supplement it because it's so cheap here in Thailand. So for women and men with an overactive bladder, do the described yoga and the acupressure below because it will relax the bladder and the prostate and afterwards if I had this overactive bladder for 40, 50 years, the symptoms stopped. <laughs> it's just so damn simple. So I describe yoga for prostrate overactive bladder, including Kegel exercise, you have to do both. Then the acupressure for overactive bladder, and this is also good for the prostrate. Then the D is massage of the prostrate with a prostate massager. Okay. Now I come to the yoga asanas and kegel exercise that relaxes your prostrate better and you can sleep without going to the toilet. We want to relax and stretch the muscles between our legs inside the prostrate better that control the urine flow. If we can relax them, then mostly our problem with urination is solved. It doesn't matter how perfectly you can do this exercise, stretching is good enough. Okay. 
I did one time in the morning the yoga for prostrate and the following night I didn't have to go. Three to five times during the night to the toilet. And then I combined it with acupressure on the foot reflex zones and acupuncture points on the body for an overactive bladder. I combine it because if there's some anxiety, <laughs> directly I have this overactive bladder and with the acupressure, I don't have this anxiety or it's not driving my bladder anymore. So it works both together. Yes, I do them every day and I can sleep the entire night, so I do it in the night and in the morning. When I have problems, this means deep problem, letting go or anxiety in some areas of life, I don't get that result. For normal anxiety, yes, deep, deep problems and so on, I get the same uh, symptoms. Okay. So the first asana is sit with your buttocks on the ground, put both foot soles together and position them close to your sex organ. Swing them up and down and then keep them relaxed in this position for at least 30 to 120 seconds. So I don't have to do them, it is an easy um, asana. And also in front of you. <laughs> then a, a second asana. Squat, squat and sit on your heel, keep your knees apart as much as, much as possible because we want to relax uh, um, the muscles. Then the third asana. <laughs> It's all very, very easy. Lay on the back, put both foot soles together and bring them close to your sex organ. Swing them up and down for 10 seconds and then keep them relaxed in this position for at least 30 to 120 seconds. So similar like the first asan. Okay. Then the for asana, the, the, the fourth uh, asana, lay on your back, the left leg straight on the ground. The right leg bend the knee and pull the knee with your hand close to your breast. Rotate the right foot to the left and right direction for 10 seconds. The rotation will relax your legs. If I don't do so, then I get in cramps during the night. So I have to do this. Um, just with the rotation. Keep the tension for 30 seconds to 120 seconds. Then you change, keep the right leg on the ground and bend the left leg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now comes the, the, the very complicated asana. Okay. <laughs> Lay on your back, pull both legs with your hands down to your breast, means, this means both uh, knees, and keep the tension for 30 to 120 seconds. Then the sixth asana, lay on your back, put both full, uh, foot soles together and pull the foot soles with your hands toward your head so that your knees are spreading more outside for 30 to 120 seconds. Then comes the Kegel exercises. So it is a must for both genders to do them when aging, the best you do it all the time. It's also good uh, um, for, for your potence and erection and so on. And for women, the same thing. Uh, so everybody should do it. You pull up your testicles or squeeze your vagina and tighten your anus. This means that muscles of the testicles are similar to, to squeeze your vagina. It's the same thing. Do this exercise at least every day, 100 times. You can do it with, uh, with meditation, you can do it everywhere. So for, uh, for the women, it is crucial when they are aging, then they cannot uh, hold their pee, so you have to do it. And for male, to, to keep uh, their uh, erection and the same to control their urine. There is I don't say nothing worse uh, or uh, um, uh, nothing better than this. And it is a must that you do it in any case. 
Then your mal asks the perineum, it is located where the vagina is between your so uh, scrotum and anus. There is a cave and you go deep inside with two fingers and massage it in a circular motion. So for women, they don't have to do this. Uh, okay. I, I say one thing, this is one of the most important acupressure points what you have on your body. And uh, um, so the difference between female and males is that the, that the, that the uh, root, uh, uh, um, root uh, um, chakra or sex chakra is in the vagina and is so connected to your um, spirituality, to your kundalini. That is the main difference, uh, main difference between both. This means sexuality is always for women connected with their sexuality. Always. So say yes to your sexuality. Okay. If you want the Kundalini or go far, you have to accept, accept, uh, accept that. Then, then acupressure points. The first is lay on the back and do asana three to save time. Aka pressure point is C4-3. It's five finger below our belly button or just below, uh, uh, just up of uh, our um, public bone and press and massage with good pressure until it hurts. Keep this pressure for one minute. So really go deep inside, as deep as you can. And so then you have done your asana three and the C4-3, okay. Then comes the crucial points, is the massage, the acupuncture points, BL or UB, how you call it, 31, 32, and 33. All of the acupuncture points are on the sacral area. The sacral is below the lumbar spine, spine and above the tailbone. Okay, we have two rows of four holes in the sacral area and press the first three holes of both rows with our fingertips or knuckles of our both hands to the same time. Okay, makes sense. No? So you find them, you just touch and then you see a little cave and there are the holes. Press until it hurts, keep this pressure for up to one minute and then go to the next two points. If you don't have the power, then lean your back against a wall and put between your back and the wall your hands. Then do this asana one again and acupressure points, um, BL32, 33 um, are done, also again. So then Again, sit in asana one and massage the foot reflex zones on both feet at the same time. We, ma we massage the kidney point, the ureter and the bladder foot reflex zones with a firm pressure until it hurts. Keep the pressure for three minutes altogether. You find this uh, uh, foot reflex zones everywhere in the uh, um, internet, uh, so I don't have to explain this. Also the kidney point, it's well known, so I don't explain this. And uh, then you have enough time to explore it and so on. And again, you, uh, you press and it should hurt a little bit. Then the next option for the prostrate uh, um, you buy a good electrical prostate massager, then you do some of the yoga asanas, slowly you put the prostate massager in your anus so that it touches the prostate. Uh, um, before you put some oil on the prostate and a massager, then you can choose the vibration and it, even, and it is even possible that you can uh, um, through such a device, uh, get an orgasm. Okay. Then comes the 
top seven worst foods for for your health and for your prostate. It's connected. So sugary uh, uh, sugary foods, refined carbo uh, carbohydrates, candies, cookies, pies, soft drinks, white rice, and white uh, and flour. All fried food. Inflammatory foods including excess saturated fat and every plant-based oil. The plant-based oil, if it's a virgin cold press oil, they are even worse than saturated fat. Because um, they produce inside of your body the most toxic attitude, attitude huts. Yeah. Uh, huts, no? ITRs, the most toxic. Right. So, because everything that is unsaturated, unsaturated, want to be saturated. So they must be more dangerous. And the ITRs, I don't want in my body. So then all processed food, meat, fish, margarine. Then dairy, including eggs, or dairy products, products except yogurt. Then calcium supplements are crazy like, or stupid like anything uh, from the Western medicine. We have already too much calcium in our blood, but not enough in our bones. Take vitamin K2 or eat natto or tempeh. And this drives, uh, um, um, this drives uh, calcium inside of your um, bones. That is crucial. And get rid of all calcium <laughs> in your food. Spicy meats and excess salt. This is clear also for the bladder. The alcohol, caffeine, sodium, smoking, drugs is also um, bad for the bladder. Then, with a poor diet, our body is producing too much insulin and DHT that produce an enlarged prostate, prostate inflammation and baldness. So you see pets everywhere. So I'm 65 years old, I have still dark hairs and so on, and I don't have any pets from, from baldness. So you see, because I don't have a poor diet. It's just because of my diet. Otherwise, you would have also in your, uh, in my age, uh, and dark hairs. No? I have a little bit uh, and gray hairs. No? We have to stick to a healthy diet, do a lot of exercise, and not consume the things discussed before. 